the label does say for it, which I quite like. Like, so Sarah's here, she's my girlfriend. We live in Victoria together. And lots of birds. So Victoria was isolated from the rest of Vancouver Island because the only road connecting Victoria to the more northern parts of Vancouver Island was um, shut down due to flooding or mudsides or something. Um, I'm guessing it's re reopened by now, though. Name for it or Espetec depends on the region of speed. Oh, okay. Regardless, I enjoy it. There's like an ingredient in Chorizo that, you know, sometimes I'm looking for, but sometimes this just is, it doesn't have that spice that, so it's just easier to eat a lot of. Um, for hitchhiking, but I have to, believe that cycling gets you more access to city content. Oh, it's the opposite. Streaming in a city on the bike is not good because, like, yeah, I can do a tour around the city from the street level, but going into places is a lot hard, harder because I'm responsible for my bike. And I can't just lock my bike up and leave it and go, like, explore places thoroughly on foot. Um, so, no, it's, it's the opposite. Sarah's mom will be overjoyed with your beard? Probably. She might, she, well, no, she probably wouldn't be watching now. The time zone, it's like after midnight. But she does like my beard more than Sarah does. Trees is about paprika. Okay, it's the paprika then. And fouet is more about black pepper. Okay. Just dropped you a piece of, yeah. There you go. Arcteryx or Lululemon? Is that an actual question? And of course, Arcteryx. <laughs> She'd be in bed, but she does like the beard. And Sarah doesn't mind a little bit of scruff, but once she sees how long it is up close and personal, then uh, she doesn't like it anymore. Oh no, what have I done? You liked it, didn't you? <laughs> Dry a sandwich and a stick of meat? Yeah? You got a problem with that? Do you have a pet dog now? Maybe. <laughs> I do like this dog. It's very polite. Like, it's begging, but politely. Our Arcteryx is so expensive. Is it really worth it? At full retail? No. It's super overpriced. It's really good. Everything Arcteryx makes, I think, is of a high quality. But, as you said, it's very expensive. I have... This is the only Arcteryx piece I've worn or bought in since I stopped working selling Arc'teryx, where I could get, twice a year, I could get a, an item for 75% off, which then made it worth it. I have this, this amazing, lightweight, but super poofy and super warm parka called the Fire BAR from Arc'teryx. It retails for $1,200. It's like the warmest jacket ever, but it packs into like, its own little stuff sack the size of like a Nalgene bottle. And I use that for my Arctic hitchhiking trip. That's the Canadian Arctic in winter. And that was great. 
Um, it's both super warm but super packable, and it has a, a windproof uh, face uh, membrane on the outside. Amazing jacket, twelve hundred dollars now, um, but I got it for seventy five percent off because you know I worked selling it, so it's three hundred dollars, which makes it actually kind of reasonable. <laughs> You're holding a temporary mic. It is not a microphone. This is my breakfast. Uh, it's mine now. Yeah, Sarah uses the big warm winter jacket because she's perpetually cold Round to Camara, small town top of a big climb northeast of Malaga. I haven't even thought that far ahead. I'm trying to get to Tarifa You work at the Vancouver store? No, I never worked at an uh, Arcteryx exclusive retailer. I worked at, um, my first job was an outdoor store in downtown Calgary, Alberta, called Out There Adventure Center. It's closed now, so you can't go there. But I really liked working there. They sold Arcteryx for apparel, Arcteryx North Face, um, Icebreaker. Yeah, they didn't really carry that many brands, but the main draw of that store was they had a huge Arcteryx selection. Yeah, it was all their apparel. They carried, carried a lot of other brands in hard goods for like tents, footwear, backpacks, all that stuff. But for apparel, it was, yeah, mostly just Arcteryx and Nor North Face. And the owner was a cool guy. Um, he had climbed Everest twice. <laughs> um, and he like owned some businesses, but um, including that one. But he also had a job of a motivational speaker. And I will say, whenever he like showed up and was like talking to the staff and stuff like that and gave like some kind of speech, I was very motivated. He's a good, <laughs> he's good at it. Um, in fact, you, you can probably look him up. I don't think that's yeah, his public entity kind of thing. Jamie Clark. He's a very cool guy. Slept on the bush. Yeah, I slept pretty decent. It was very loud, so I was mostly sheltered from the wind, but the wind was ripping through like the bushes and trees like above me, which was just very loud. So I woke up a few times just because general loud ambient sounds. I feel like this sandwich could have used some olive oil or butter on it, though. Your family been affected by the floods? Well, I haven't actually spoke to them yet. I should, though. I'm bad at staying in contact with people while I'm abroad. The exception on this trip has been Sarah. I think I've been good at staying in contact with Sarah. Lots of cheese, though. Yeah, I don't know what type of cheese this is. It's a very, like, kind of brittle, hard cheese. I don't know what it is. It's good, though. Can you call me this morning? I told you I wasn't going to this morning because I was fairly public. And I needed to get out of there before, like, people were out and about. We talked about this last night. Model was the red Arcteryx jacket. It's an Arcteryx Alpha FL hard shell jacket. So that's in their ascent line, which is meant for like alpinism. Like it, it's meant for like it's like a climbing jacket. Uh, is their Alpha line, and then FL stands for fast and light. 
Um, No matter, like, so it's meant to be a super lightweight and packable jacket, and it is. It's for, like, a, a three-layer Gore-Tex jacket, it's super lightweight and quite breathable. But if you want it to be just the most breathable thing ever, just chuck pit zips in it. That would make it a perfect jacket for me if it had pit zips. No matter how breathable a waterproof breathable membrane is, this Gore-Tex Pro Shell, whatever, um, just having the ability to open up your pits is, is, <laughs> is a huge huge benefit. Um, it does not have that. It's the only thing I wish it had. It also only has one ch chest pocket. It doesn't have like hand, like lower pockets. So it's meant to be really lightweight and packable. So I understand our characters like pit zips adds weight and adds, it makes it harder to pack things because it's got these weird flex points where the, where the, the zips are. But um, pit, pit zips actually make it breathable. Can I watch your Arctic hitchhiking trip? That was February 2017. I only started streaming April 2018. It was pre that. Also, even if I did try to stream that, like, if you look at a map of the route, but route I went from Calgary to Inuvik Northwest Territories, most of that is completely unoccupied Arctic tundra. And you know what they don't put in the Arctic tundra? Cell towers. <laughs> There wouldn't have been a stream. There would only be a stream inside the towns, especially once we work our way north. Like, between Calgary to Edmonton would have been fine. Edmonton to Grand Prairie would have been fine. Grand Prairie to, like, eastern Alberta through, like, what? I can't remember my northeastern BC towns. Would have maybe been fine, but past that. Like, was it Fort Nelson? No. I forget what that sad-looking town was like. The industry dried up, so all the businesses were closed. Between that town and Watson Lake, Yukon, it's like 500 kilometers of nothing. No stream there between Watson Lake and Whitehorse, Yukon. is like nothing. No service there. Between Whitehorse and um, Dawson City, Yukon, there's like nothing. There'd be no cell network between towns. And then between Dawson City and Inuvik, which is like 700 kilometers of Arctic tundra, uh, there's nothing. Um, Isa with the eight months prime. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Can I read that? I can't. It's yellow. I can't read yellow on white. See the damage BC? I did to the highways, the infrastructure. That's less than ideal. Um, yeah. Go to Alicante? I don't know where that is, to be honest. I'm gonna look at a map because it's bothering me that I forget the name of that northeastern BC town. Was it Fort Nelson? It was Fort Nelson, okay. I think it was an industrial town. It had like, like a sawmill, paper mill, something like that. And then those closed up and then all the businesses dried up after that. Starting to sell like this, be modified to fit in the backpacker bike. No, you can't move it. It doesn't work like that yet. Um, if you take the Starlink dish and you, you have it set up and working and you go like this, you pick it up and you wiggle it, it will disconnect. It, it is not capable of being taken mobile in its current state. When are you? Um, Eventually, hopefully, maybe. You ever hitchhike in Africa? No, I haven't. Hi. You're polite. 
That was the most polite thing ever. Wow, you're great. I like you. <laughs> that wasn't a big enough piece. All right, fine. That wasn't enough. I think this is a stray. Dog walked right into the bar, and then the owner was just like, like shooing it away. So your experience in Albania, Kosovo? Mm. Really good. The hitchhiking was easy. Mm. I think my first ride. I didn't actually have to catch many rides in Albania. Um, I was like, I picked up this group of guys and picked me up and we rode for a while and they wanted to take me out for a big lunch. So they took me out for the big lunch like by the coast somewhere and we had this huge feast. Uh, and they were super down with the stream and everything like that. They didn't speak any English, but we had a grand old time. And they, they, they were going to Kosovo, I think. Yeah, so... so they drove me like through Al No, I caught a few rides because I remember I took a day off in Skoder. Skoder, Albania. So I spent some time there. Um, and I got a hotel in, in Albania in, in Skoder. And they had free bikes. That's why I actually chose it because I wanted to do some stuff around town and it'd be easier to take a bike. They didn't have helmets, and the bike's brakes didn't work. So it was terrifying, because you're just like in traffic with no helmet, with a bike with no brakes, riding around a city in Albania. Mm. But yeah, yeah, no, the hitchhiking was easy in Albania. In Kosovo as well, the hitchhiking was fine. There's no problems. The people were nice as well. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I guess they like Westerners in Kosovo, the whole U.S. thing. In the 90s. That's good. Bikes which break when you pedal backwards are terrifying. At least you have brakes. I didn't have brakes. I had front and rear brakes, but they didn't do anything. Because it's not a Western country. Well, it's just, in Kosovo, you know, its history means, like, they have a statue of Bill Clinton. I think it was a statue. Or was it just a giant mural of Bill Clinton? Which is, you don't expect that. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, because that was the last country I went to before like the whole world shut down um, due to COVID. And then I caught a ride into North Macedonia and caught a flight home to Canada because that's when all the pandemic stuff was going crazy last March. I think I'll get another Capricorn Lecce. I don't know if I should leave my um, food here though. Oh. 
put this like in the middle. That egg Sammy, it's just cheese. It's bread and cheese. Plan for today. Get as close to uh, Tarif as I can, but I'm gonna have a headwind all day and it's 60 kilometers. Like, if we didn't have the wind, we could totally do that, but with the wind, I don't think it's, it's gonna happen. Stay there. Con leche, por favor. Muy bien. Gracias. Oh, so polite. Oh, and they got a water fountain thing right there. It's just chomping on a stick of meat. I do this a lot. Does that have calorie information on it? Per 100 grams, 420 calories, and what's the actual net weight? What's the net weight? Yeah, it's two pieces of meat, but what, how much meat is in two sticks? I don't know, probably 100 and something grams each. It's very calorie dense. Can't stand coffee. The smell makes me gag. There's a lot of people that don't like the taste of coffee, but still enjoy the smell. Coffee smells so good. It's one of my favorite smells. Compressed meat? Did I say that? Like, cured meat. I don't know. Preserved. Worst smells you've experienced on your journeys? Well, just any kind of sewage smell. You just get random whiffs. Anytime you buy a water treatment facility, that's never nice. I'm a coffee smells and tastes evil. I don't know how you can say it smells bad. It smells like a wet dumpster full of trash. Ugh, that is so wrong. But everyone is entitled to have opinions. I'm just allowed to think your opinion sucks. Spreading manure smells bad. I don't mind, like, you know, it smells like a farm. But like my grandpa had a small farm when I was a kid. And I was pretty used to just the smell of manure in that way. Mm. dead animal rotting is worse. It's true. I get a lot of roadkill and sometimes you'll get a, a good whiff as you go by. Ever had coffee made from cat poop? I've heard of it, but no, I haven't had it. Yes, yes. Huh? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. You appear to be in a bad mood, a tad rude today. That's just like your opinion, man. 
What was I even rude about today? Because I said people that thought coffee smelled and tasted bad had a bad opinion. <laughs> That was a joke. <laughs> but I will be in a bad mood once I have to ride down the road. Like, I guarantee it, I'm going to be swearing more than, than usual. Welcome. <laughs> Will you reach Barcelona today? If I can average a speed of about 100 kilometers an hour for 10 hours straight, I can reach Barcelona today. But I'm probably going to be averaging about 8 kilometers an hour. So unfortunately, we will not reach Barcelona. for the Gibraltar, but probably like just over 100 kilometers, it was 60 kilometers to Tarifa and then not that far to Gibraltar, but a, you know, good little distance. Missed the reason for not reaching G Barcelona, what was it? Not re reaching Barcelona today, the fact that it's over a thousand kilometers away. So, I can't get there today on a bicycle. Time for bed night, Trevor. Night chat. Have a good day. See ya, Sarah. Have a good sleep. Everyone say good night to Sarah. Clouds are forming, yeah, it's gonna rain tonight, tomorrow, and at least the next day, if not more. What's that sandwich? It's a sandwich with cheese on it, and that's it. Cheese? Yes. <laughs> sandwich with just cheese. That's why I got out a stick of meat. Because I felt like it needed more. So I custom made my own mouth sandwich. So this is my meat. I'm just adding it to my own sandwich. A plan for the rain days. I just, I can't stream cycling, so I don't know, wherever I get to today, I'm just going to be there, I guess. Got an ad again, paying five dollars a month resub, so I get no ads. Oh well, yeah, I, I get not paying for the stream. I don't actually choose to run ads. Twitch just forces it upon you. If I ran, I think it's like two minutes of ads an hour. Then we could disable pre-roll ads, and I could choose when the ads run. Like say when I go to the washroom or something like that, which is quite infrequent actually. But I just never run ads, so. People get pre-roll ads, and then Twitch just runs its ads whenever it feels like. You can't stream cycling? Not in the rain. 
Cory Boy 6 with the gifted sub to Langstrom. Cory Boy 6, the originator of the banana sniping on this channel, way, way back. <laughs> Fairly legendary in this stream, if I do say so myself. Alright. Yeah, sure. What are you guys even barking at? You're not supposed to bark. You're my friend. Um, get, let me get pure rods for you. Okay, that's that's how it's set up. If I run two ads an hour, then it disables pre-roll at pre-roll ads. I think for anyone, which is nice for discoverability. But then I have to run ads manually. Is that like a greyhound, or is it one of the, the what are they called, whippets? Oh, God, dogs are so timid. It's just like shaking because all the dogs were barking. They're mean to you, aren't they? Right. This is like a dried part of cheese. You can have this. There you go. Oh. It was too big and hard. <laughs> he tried to swallow it without chewing. Hey. You're breaking my heart. This is when all the dogs bark and you get all scared and shaky. What are you eating your hand? Uh, fouet. It's like a cured meat thing. Just the fact that the dog is like quivering, like it, it was calm and it was like laying over there behind the chair and it was like chill and then the dog started barking and then it just started like shaking and it just broke my heart. <laughs> wants the meat. I've given the dog meat. No, I don't chat often when Hitch always mentions the banana when I do. It's, it became like a core focus of the stream for like a, a reasonable amount of time. There, there's like the banana snipe era of this stream that we call Hitch. And Cory Bor started it. So <laughs> but yeah, you don't you don't actually talk that much in chat. So when it comes up, I'm just like <laughs> you. <laughs> you did a thing. Wow, those are some nice bananas, guys. Some kind of hobo or something? Yeah. <laughs> That's where it all began. It was Wisconsin, right? Or had we made it to Minnesota? 
pretty windy today, very windy today. Like sustained winds of 50 kilometers an hour, gusting over 70. Wausau, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, back on the right. That was the OG Hitchhiking America trip, right? It wasn't the Hitchhiking the TwitchCon trip. Let me pull up the Windy app, actually. The Windy website that everyone tells me to go to. Windy. Let's go to... Oh my close. I'm just north of Canil de la Frontera. <laughs> Leave my friend alone. So right now it's sustained winds of 39, gusts 70. By one o'clock, it'll be sustained 46 gusts of 79 kilometers an hour. And then come tonight, the wind starts to die down. Like, by midnight, it's like sustained 23 kilometers an hour, gusts of 48. So it's just slowed down and then come tomorrow, it's just a lot less. Was that drink? Uh, coffee with milk. So, who asked? What about the wind speed? Oh, it's my, it's my, it's my live stream. <laughs> I get to talk about what I want to talk about. And today I want to talk about how I'm going to complain about the wind. Why would you watch a stream if you don't care what the streamer has to say? Uh, Cory Boy with another gifted sub. Appreciate it. Oh, hello. Welcome back. Our tents rated for wind. Um, different tents will be better in wind, depending on the tent. Um, but like, so I, I camped out last night, and it it was in the fifty to seventy kilometer hour wind, like it is now. Um, but I was in some pretty dense bushes so that it cut the wind enough that I was barely getting any wind. You could hear the wind ripping over top of me, but I was mostly sheltered from it. A tailwind you wouldn't need to pedal? Yeah, yesterday for a little bit. I went the wrong direction. I had to spin around, so I was riding into a headwind and I spun around and had a tailwind and I just coasted. I was just like, I don't even have to pedal. Who's this guy? Why is he talking? Oh, it's the streamer, yeah. Why would the live streamer talk? But like, I have people that hate watch me. They hate you, but then they sit there watching you, and then they message you saying how much they hate you while watching you. And they follow your social media, so as soon as you go live, you know, like they follow the stream and Discord because they immediately start messaging you as soon as you go live. Do 
you always camp? Most nights, but I took a day off in Cadiz and I got a place to stay. I, I'll probably end up getting a place to stay this weekend because it's supposed to rain all weekend. Prince in the Spanish with donations telling them how much they hate you. There you go. Monetize the hate. When it is. Much more happen, or much more scale as the bartender happens a lot. Someone will sit there and complain about the place, service, price, then order a drink and continue to complain. Never understood it. Nah, I don't, yeah, I don't get it. You don't like the thing, but then you can keep consuming that thing that you say you don't like. Look, isn't there like a bunch of video game developers that people kind of have that same relationship with? They hate the games they produce, but then they still buy the games, and then they still play the games, but then they hate everything about the games that they produce, but then they still buy them, so then the video game developers still make the games in the way that they say they hate, but then they keep buying the games, so nothing ever changes. How fluent are you with conversation there? Um, as close to zero as possible. <laughs> I like how people just have named a ton of different video game developers. Apparently there's a few. Where do you sleep well? Mm, I slept in a bush last night. If you watched the end of the stream yesterday, you can see kind of where I was at, but the network was really crap. It was really bad. So I didn't even stream the tent setup, and I didn't stream the tent takedown this morning because the network was just really bad. Language basis gives you much better experience. You're missing out. Low. I, I enjoy the type of traveling I do. But it's a much more social experience when I'm hitchhiking because... I spend much more time communicating with people, even if it's through a translator, because I'm in their car, driving down the road. But, I don't think anyone has to tell me how to travel. I'll come up with my own type of traveling that I enjoy. some sort of hotspot. Yeah, so right now we're running the stream off of a Netgear Nighthawk M1 MR1100 uh, European version. Bad network, bad wind, bad rain coming. Spain's being very nice to you. It has been though, until now. We've had like this is day nine, and every day up until yesterday was just a beautiful sunny day. And in general on this trip, we only had like one weekend in Lisbon where the weather was bad and the rest has been a beautiful sunny day. And if there was a wind, it wasn't like a particularly bad wind. Created a nice niche for yourself, Hitch. This is definitely a niche. This is a normal kind of Twitch stream, isn't it? Mm. If you can stay in age, if you can do something that you enjoy, you have half the battle cert. Yeah. So essentially, like my niche is just some kind of adventurous kind of travel. Whether it's hitchhiking or now cycle touring. And this is the type of traveling I enjoy doing. I don't, I don't like spending my whole time in cities doing the city stuff. 
museums and cathedrals and all that stuff. Like, I like checking out the architecture and stuff, but I'd rather spend more time finding some adventure of getting from A to B than actually spending time in point B where I got to. We need to shower, where do you shower? Well, a lot of times I go several days without a shower, but whether it's someone invites me in for a shower or I get like a campground that has showers or if I do take a day off and sleep inside, then you, you know, you have a hotel or hostel or whatever to shower in. We've got Deborah with the 15 month resub. Thanks for the 15 months. Besides the hardware, what's the data subscription cost like? Uh, through one of those streamer resellers, multi-nation data like before. I have to get data wherever I go now because I, I, my inter, unlimited international plan is gone from unlimited IRL. Um, everyone lost that plan. Uh, so currently, I, I don't know what I'm paying per day. I forget what it is. I think it's like 70 euros for like close to a month. But then I also have some prepaid plans. So in total, I'm paying like I think it's close to like 150 euros for the Spanish part of this trip, where I only paid 25 euros in Portugal because the data was really cheap. Do you think a female can do what you do? What, ride a bike? <laughs> yeah. Wait, and then right after you'd say no, huh? Why would you ask a question and answer it yourself? or seemingly answer it based on zero understanding of the topic. But I'm not a woman, so I don't know what it's like to travel as a woman on a bike. But I've met lots of women that have been cycling on this trip some solo, some um, in a group. She is pointing to the fact that such adventures are much, much more dangerous for a single woman to travel. It's not my place to say. Ask a woman that's actually traveled solo. Hundred fifty years a day, or a month? A month, sorry. Not cycling, hitchhiking, haha. Uh, I've met plenty of women that have six hitchhiked solo. They usually have more strict rules about who they decide to get in the car with than me. It's such a common statement to make, just being like, oh, you're only doing this because you're insert demographic here. If you were insert any other demographic here, then you couldn't do what you do. I don't know. I'm, I'm just who I am. <laughs> and I just do what I do. I don't know what it's like to be insert any other demographic here. Ask someone who is that demographic, who's actually done what I do, what their experiences is like. That was a decent little breakfast.
Where's the dog? Pretty much laying down right next to you guys. Still on YouTube stuff? Uh, yeah. We just need like an an editor that is good at somehow putting a narrative together from all the crazy hours I stream. That you can cut it down into something that would be a, a, a nice, enjoyable YouTube kind of, like weekly kind of video thing. Time difference has been affecting the stream numbers. G generally, my numbers are similar. Depend no matter what time zone we're in, your demographics just change a little bit based on when you're streaming. Like, just in Europe, like when I start streaming, it's like the middle of night for North America, so it's more of a European audience, at least at the start. And then later in the day, then North America starts coming in, um, and then people like. My lowest numbers were when I streamed in New Zealand, but that's almost the same demo or time zone as Japan, and Japan was like the most busy my stream has ever been, so I wouldn't say the time zone was the biggest factor in that one. It's just people love Japan. Uh, I don't think it makes a huge difference. It certainly affects like on an individual basis, like certain viewers cannot watch when I'm in certain time zones uh, and can watch when I'm in other time zones, but as a whole, you're looking at the statistics of the stream, it's comparable. Okay. Let's pack up some stuff, pay my bill. And then we'll start setting up the third person camera. One of these. Sure. Hope you have a great ride today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a probably pretty miserable ride because it's gonna be so windy. I'm mostly sheltered now, but I can see this palm tree next to me just getting smacked by wind. Why are you so shaky? <laughs> okay, I gotta pay my bill. It's okay. <laughs> Get some change out because there's had so much change buried in the bottom of my. Uh... Handlebar bag that. Should be enough. Or think feed it. I fed it plenty. it quite a bit. Oh, maybe not plenty.
for her dine and dash more. I know it's a joke, but I think it happened like twice on my first Europe trip where like, you know, sometimes you prepay, sometimes you pay after. And my, like, I just like eat somewhere and my brain would just assume that I already paid. And then I just like walked out of the place and then like the staff would like run out and be like, hey, you haven't paid. And I'd be like, oh. Like, and it's just me being dumb and I'm like, the streaming can make me like scatterbrained sometimes. Uh, so then I paid and I tipped them a bunch of money because I'm like, I didn't mean to, I swear. I swear I'm not trying to steal from you. Um, but I technically have walked out of restaurants on stream because I just wasn't paying attention. It always seems malicious. Yeah, I, I, like to the staff, I just assume that they think I'm purposely doing it, but I'm really not. <laughs> it was an accident. Uh, I'm gonna use the bathroom here and then I'll be right back.
That's fine. Do-do-do.